Welcome to the Leading Sheep webinar series on nutritional management of spring lambing merinos to ram more lambs, featuring Dr John Milton from Independent Lab Services in Western Australia. We speak today we, uh, on nutritional management of spring lambing merino ewes to rear more lambs. The key focus here is to rear more lambs. The first thing, if we want to rear more lambs, we've got to kick those maidens into gear. They've got to start earning their keep, so we want maidens rearing more lambs. First to get, firstly, to do this, we've got to get more maidens pregnant. And how can we help achieve that? The initial thing is they have to be sexually mature. And sexually mature, sexual maturity is more related to mature weight than age. However, by the spring, uh, sorry, by the autumn uh, of the spring, after the, uh, the previous um, spring when they are born, they will be, uh, well two springs back, will be, they will be 18 months old, but they need to be at least 70% of mature weight. I've found this is one of the things that's let many people down with their maidens, they're just not big enough. And they need to be in good condition and that gold standard, that benchmark condition score 3 certainly applies to them. So the, if they're big enough, they're in the breeding season because you're mating for a spring lambing. So they're in the breeding season, so they've got everything going for them to get in lamb. So that's their job and that's what they should get on with. But you can't handicap them. Don't have them losing condition during joining. Losing condition is life-threatening, essentially. So why would they want to take on a parasite when they're already trying to grow themselves and they're losing weight? So. Consequently, you must hold up their condition uh, for that at least a 35-day 35, a 35 mating. I'm not an advocate of long mating. If anything, I go for short mating, but in this case, certainly they need two cycles. Join the maiden separate from the mature ewes. There's a number of reasons for this. Is that estrus is often shorter in maidens than mature ewes. It can be as short as half the length of time. So the rams, the ewes are in, in, available for mating for a shorter period. They're receptive to the ram for a shorter time. And so we don't want those rams spending their time with the mature ewes when they should be working on those maiden ewes. So separate them for joining. Some maidens don't even seek out the rams. They're in estrus. They're ovulated. They're in estrus and they won't seek out the rams. Our work here at UWA has shown that uh, with our temperament group, that our maiden ewes, um, some of our maiden ewes with a poor temperament didn't seek out the rams and consequently didn't get in lamb. Uh, so we've established that fact. There's a lot of, a lot of anecdotal evidence from uh, past uh, graziers certainly to, to, to attest to that, that some ewes don't seek out rams. And the other thing is, as I said, that time, the shorter easters, the mature ewes will often hog the rams. And um, they like to capitalise on those rams and uh, because they're in easters longer, and some of them are more than twice as long easters as, um, as, as, as the maidens. Now once you've got those maidens that you've scanned them pregnant, you need to manage them as well. Because you've got to give them adequate feed for fetal, for their fetal growth and their own body growth. They're still growing, so they need that. They need good nutrition and hold them around that score three. I know it can be difficult, but that is the standard, and there's quite good. There's a lot of good evidence to support that score three. Generally, your maidens will only have a single, which is good from that point of view, but they need to have it and rear it. So don't overfeed them. We don't want too big a lambs in there. Um, and um, there's been work showing sometimes if your maidens are overfed, you can actually induce um, a smaller lambs. So their chances of survival are a lot less. So there's two, two sides to that coin. I don't think the experiment's been done in the critical experiment's been done in merinos, but certainly work overseas in crossbreds has shown, in British breeds has shown, overfeeding led to small lambs. My experience with many of my clients has not been the case, um, and um, but basically we've got to get that maiden up to a good weight so that she can then um, carry herself through pregnancy and through lactation. So she's got a serious job to do, 
and we've got to make sure she's well prepared and capable of doing it. And certainly with a little bit of uh, fat on her back as well, and that score three means that she has got some. The other point about maidens is that we should slam them separate from their mature ewes. So they're basically managed all the way separate. A big issue here is lamb stealing. A maiden has never had a lamb before, and at <clears throat> it's quite well established that um, at all times, ewes find placenta quite, or afterbirth, quite repugnant. But on the point of lambing, they actually are attracted to the placenta. And if we've got mature ewes lambing with maiden ewes, and a maiden lamb is on the point of lambing, and the mature ewe is attracted to her by her placenta, uh, or she's lambed, and, uh, and, and uh, the mature ewe, she's on the point of lambing, she's got maternal instincts kicking in for in her brain, and so she will steal that lamb before the maiden gets a chance to even turn around and probably suckle it. Because the maiden has never had a lamb before, and she probably gets a bit of a fright or whatever. I've never been able to ask the sheep. I've, the next language you've got to learn is, is to learn to speak sheep. The bottom line to this slide though, ladies and gentlemen, is that lambs from maidens have the best genetics. So if you want to make genetic gain in your business, in your sheep business, in your merino sheep business, then you have to have maidens having lambs and plenty of them and rearing them. 